morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Lab 207 Webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about populations. The topic for the day is going to be the demographic transition, and I think this might be the shortest uh, video slideshow I've ever put together. It's only got like four slides. Who knows how long it'll take to talk through, though. But like always, let me get you your objectives. So by the end of this video, be able to discuss the phases of the demographic transition. That is our big topic for the day. And also describe the link between opportunities for women and TFR, total fertility rate. So that's what we got. Let's go ahead and try to make this short. First thing, you need to know about the demographic transition. Um, the demographic transition is a model that was put together to describe the population growth of a country as a country becomes more economically developed. So the idea was that this model could be developed that says, all right, if a country is still developing, this is what their population growth pattern should look like. If they are moving forward and starting to become developed, this is what their growth pattern should look like. Here's what a developed country's growth pattern should look like. And here's what a highly developed post-industrial society should look like. Um, let me just note right now that this model is not perfect, but it at least gives us a starting place when we talk about how a country might grow as it becomes more developed. And so let's go ahead and just jump in, start talking through this model. Now, this graphic here has got a ton of information on it, and I'm just going to start writing and drawing all over it. First thing you need to know is that it is divided into four or five <clears throat> areas. Um, most people recognize, at least for the sake of simple education, that there are four stages. One, two, three, four. A lot of models that you will see have a small little stage five out here, and we'll talk about that in a second. And basically what you do is you move across the graph. You are moving through the uh, development of a country. Now, this model right here was put together for the UK, but it could be applied to just about any country. So just forget these years and just think about that as just time across the bottom. And so here's kind of how it goes. When we are in stage one, this type of country is completely undeveloped or they are, have a very low development level. And in a country like this, there are a couple of things that are true. Right here, the red line, that is the death rate. The green line is the birth rate. And then down here is the total population. In a stage one country, your death rate is very high. So there isn't really health care. Life is dangerous. People get sick. They die. Life expectancy is short. So your death rate is pretty high. And then to counteract this, the birth rate is also high because culturally people have realized, hey, if I'm going to have enough kids to provide food for the family or to work the farm or whatever, I need to have a lot of babies because it's possible that some of these babies are going to die off. So in a stage one country, the birth rate is high and the death rate is high, but your population is low and your population is steady. The population doesn't really grow at all, or if it grows, it's very slow. So the idea here is that birth rate and death rate cancel each other out. Um, Example of a country that would fit this model or a place that would fit this model is Amazon Basin tribes. These would be um, tribes living in the deepest, darkest Amazon that have not yet had access to the modern world, really. And their population pyramid would look something like this. Really broad base, but people die off pretty quickly to balance out the uh, growth. Now, as a country becomes more developed, so they start to have technology, healthcare starts to get better, the country is becoming more modern, a couple things happen. First thing, and the notable thing, is see this red death rate line? Once you get to stage two, the death rate drops way off. And it drops off because the country is starting to get healthcare, sanitation is probably coming in, the quality of life is generally going up, so your death rate goes way down, but culturally, People are still in the mindset of we need to have lots of children, whether it's to work the farm or to replace ones that might die. For whatever reason, in a stage two country, even though the death rate has fallen, culture has not yet caught up. So you have a high birth rate still. So you can kind of guess that if your death rate is going down, but your birth rate is staying steady, your population growth is going to start increasing rapidly. And a country that exhibits this model presently would be Ethiopia. Um, population pyramids for a country like this looks like this. It's a classic like exponential growth pyramid. So this would be a stage two, and it's known as an early expanding uh, country. 
Then we move on into stage three, and this is where things start to shift quite a bit. In stage three, your death rate is starting to stabilize, and culture has caught up. So people realize, hey, I don't need to have so many kids in order to um, replace kids that have passed away. Also, in a stage three country, um, cost of living is probably going up. Like, just living is going to be more expensive, so obviously having more kids is going to be expensive. Also, people are working, they have access to education. So for all of these reasons, the birth rates fall off dramatically. And as that death rate stabilizes and birth rates start to fall, your country is still growing quite a lot. Um, an example of this would be India. So this is a country that is rapidly moving towards being a modern country, um, but there's still large parts of the country where this transition is still in progress. And then once we get to stage four, things balance out and you have got a pretty stable population. So your population has grown quite a lot, but in stage four, it's going to stabilize. Your death rate is pretty low and your birth rate is pretty low. So at stage four, things have mostly stabilized. Um, Examples of this would be the UK, America, Australia, Canada, um, developed nations like that. So these are going to be pretty highly developed countries. And then a lot of models will include this stage five. In stage five, what countries start to see is that their death rates may go up and their birth rates may go down. So people are having fewer kids, more people are dying, maybe the population is older, um, so your population might start to decrease a little bit. Places where this happens or, you know, we're starting to see this would be Russia, Germany is an example of this, Japan is an example of this. So pretty highly developed countries, but they're seeing that their population is actually declining over time. So I would spend some time looking over this, make sure that you can understand the different stages of the graph and make sure that if I give you the characteristics of a country, you can tell me, all right, this is a stage one country or it's a stage two or three or four or maybe stage five country. Now, this model is not absolutely perfect. Um, an example of a country that doesn't fit the model is Nicaragua. And there are many other countries across the developing world that economically they have not become developed yet, but due to public education campaigns or other factors, the birth rates in those countries are declining. So their population growth is slowing to what might be a stage three or stage four countries, uh, population growth, but economically they are still, you know, like a stage two country. So just recognize that the model I just showed you is a generalization. It doesn't fit every situation. And here's your last slide for the day. As we talk about population growth, probably the biggest driver or indicator of growing population is going to be the total fertility rate. And if you remember, I talked about in a previous video, total fertility rate is the number of children that each woman in a country has. And obviously it's an average, so it's not saying Sally's got, you know, five kids and Jenny's got two kids and whatever. It's saying the average woman in Ghana is going to have three or four kids. So it's an average across the country. Now, one thing that has been found, or a couple of things that have been found, in general, the more developed a country is economically, the lower the total fertility rate. So as countries move through that demographic transition, as we saw on the line, birth rates go down. There's a couple reasons for that. Um, first one is access to education for women. So if women have access to education, it has been shown very reliably that the fertility rate for that country will drop. And the reason for that is that in a country where women don't have access to education, it's very likely that they'll get married and start having kids around the age of 13, 14, 15, something like that. And they'll probably have a bunch of kids throughout their life because that's just kind of their lot in life. They are the wife, they stay at home, they take care of the house, they take care of the family, and they have children. Now, if a woman has access to education, you know, she may be in school all the way up until she's 17, 18, 19, 20 years old. So that dramatically uh, pushes back the age at which she's probably going to have her first kid. And the other thing is, if she is in school, obviously she's too busy to be having children. And if she is moving on into a career, it's possible that she's going to spend time pursuing her career and her economic development and not really have time for having a lot of kids or taking care of a lot of kids. Also, education brings cultural awareness. So if you have grown up in a culture, you know, let's say a small village where all of the families have got eight or nine kids. That is your normal. You don't know anything different. You don't know that in other parts of the world, women are only having one or two children. This is what you know, and so this is the way you expect things to be. But if a woman has access to education, then she starts to be exposed to other cultures and starts to realize, oh, wait, 
I don't have to be having six or seven kids. You know, it's quite all right to have a small family of one or two children. So um, all of those factors together kind of drive the reason that total fertility rates go down as the development of a country increases, and especially as opportunities for women's decrease. Um, many uh, demographers will say that the quickest way to slow population growth is to provide education and development for women. So that's what we got for the day. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.